Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo. We're here at the South Park Center and I'm delighted to be joined with Scott with his fantastic movie, Panorama. Let's take a look at the clip. Mother, when you leave this earth, what awaits you? A door, a stairway. Or is it darkness? Sam, do you believe in angels? I used to. Um, Scott, thank you so much for being here, but thank you so much for bringing your film to New Filmmakers LA. Um, I'm, I, I, I love your film so, so, so much. I can't believe this is your first film, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but for those that haven't seen Panorama, tell us a brief synopsis. Uh, Panorama is a coming of age story uh, about a young man named Sam who is experiencing a huge grief uh, at that point in his life uh, with his mother passing away two months prior. And uh, as he's leaving a uh, party with his girlfriend, he ends up having a near-death experience. And on the other side of that experience is his mother and she guides him through different parts of his life, uh, you know, childhood, teenage years um, mm -hmm. as an adult and even as an old man and uh, yeah it's really just a coming of age story about you know a, a young man putting to to rest to a certain degree and even just making peace with like his inner child yeah and accepting the responsibilities of what it is to be a man so. Scott you did a, a really fantastic job like you, you know I think one of the things what you can experience when you're watching a film is you know you can't help but obviously feel the characters and the yeah. set you've seen to, the set that you've um you've given us, but I just can't help but like eternalize and it just made me think about the thing, the mistakes that I've made or the things that I didn't and just making sure I called my loved ones. And that's yeah. what, you know, and I did after yeah. watching your film, you know, yeah. and it was such an appreciation of, of just, you know, life and, and what we go through, what one goes through and loss and, yeah. and love and everything. You did such a, I, I, honestly, I really cannot believe this is your first film. It was such a wonderful cinematic experience. You. you really got so deep in, in the emotion of what we was going through and his relationship with his mother. Um, you shared a bit last night, but where did the inspiration come from in, in creating this project and turning it into a film? Yeah, it was, I mean, I feel like it was a very long process because, you know, I went to, I was doing theater school at USC and that's much more of an acting based education. And so I was learning about that and learning a, a lot about plays and story. And I didn't really have like much of the confidence to be able to sit down and write something. Um, but at that same time, I was going through a certain period with my mom where it was a rough patch in our relationship. And, you know, more or less, I didn't really know where she was um, for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And I would hear from her every now and then. And growing up a mama's boy, you know, a single parent, uh, you know, she had me when she was 16. So I had a lot of you know, a lot of, a lot of connection yeah. there, and, you know, and it, a lot of connection that was lost at that point. So, you know, I was just trying to figure out how to uh, work with that mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a young adult fresh out of college. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I could really learn to do was just like write a scene and then it turned into a story and then it turned into like our story. And um, I shelved it for a while and I uh, didn't really have the confidence to share it with many people. Um, but, you know, over the course of a couple of years, I got an opportunity to direct at a, uh, a theater company in Slauson. And that really gave me the confidence to be like, wow, like, you know, this is like an option, you know. Mm. And uh, I talked to our team um, when uh, about, uh, about a year before Panorama happened. And I was like, hey, if we want to make a movie, we have to make a short film, you know. Yeah. If we want to get to that point, we got to do this. And I gave them a couple different scripts that I was looking at, about three different ones. And I was secretly hoping that Panorama would be the one they connected with, and they did. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that's like more or less like logistically how it got there. But uh, during that time when I was actually writing Panorama, uh, my partner at the time, uh, she lost her father. Mm -hmm. And that was something that was, I had, you know, you, you can't prepare for. No. And so, you know, when I was like telling this story about a grief that I had, um, I realized that like I didn't even fully understand what that grief could evolve into. Yeah. And um, you know, so my biggest priority when writing that was to make her feel at peace, make mm -hmm. her feel proud, make her feel seen and heard. Mm -hmm. And so that was something that greatly influenced the material. I mean, amazing. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, you know, it, sometimes these stories can come from quite a personal place, and I hope in the process that it felt. 
therapeutic for you and, f and for her in, 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 in making that as well. And thank you for sharing such a story that is personal to you. And, and I think, you know, these things become universal. You know, we, we all have gone through different things. And I think that's the beauty of film of, of, of how we kind of relate to the, the, what you've made for us. Um, I just thought your cast were mesmerizing. Um, I really did. I thought your, you know, the leads and, and what he was feeling going through, his relationship with his mom and everything and people around him. Uh, in your first film, how was it, like bringing that cast together? How was that process for you? Man, it was, honestly, I was very lucky because like all of my first choices ended up happening. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was very lucky. That's great. Um, I got a little spoiled, honestly. Yeah. But I actually went to school with Shane at USC. Oh, did you? And, yeah, so we met, um, I think, in like 2014, I think. Oh, nice. And he was like doing the BFA program. Yeah. And that's where all the fancy actors go. Yeah. I was in just the BA program. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, we ended up keeping in touch over the course of these, you know, few years. And his career really took off once we got out of college. Yeah. And like I said, I was going through a process where I was figuring out like my voice as an artist and what mm -hmm. I really wanted to do. And when I had Panorama done, I actually, like, the entire time I was thinking of Shane. I was like, I need an artist who is somebody who can, like, embody this and mm -hmm. not only embody it, but take it to a different level than, like, mm -hmm. I could put on the page. Yeah. And Shane was that guy from the jump. And so I approached him very nervously when we were getting lunch one day. And I was like, you know, being very modest, I was like, hey, you know, if I have this, uh, I have this script, <laughs> read it, you know, and he, and he read it, like, uh, you know, a couple hours later and just called me. He's like, I'm in. And I was like, oh, I was like, all right, cool. Amazing. And then, yeah, and then like our, our uh, executive producer, Spencer Pacinger, and Dane Mork really helped with getting Karima as mm -hmm. the mother. Yeah, she's And again, amazing. she was my first oh. choice. Yeah, so, so I, it was again, just spoiled from top to bottom. You know, the yeah. whole cast is incredible. Um, you know, I met Malaya, uh, you know, plays so Danielle. Yeah. I met her a couple years ago and was just blown away by how just like how much natural talent she had. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I wrote that, I was like, Malaya has to play Danielle, there's no other person. And so yeah. from top to bottom, first choice. So I was very lucky. Oh, that's so, yeah. that's so, that's, that's wonderful. Well, I mean, and like, you know, going into like your first, you know, directing piece, how do you work with your actors, sorry? So as for working with the actors, I mean, it was just, I was very lucky because I had a lot of experience at USC and like how they taught me actors prepare. So I felt very comfortable in that language and still do. And, you know, as far as the cast, you know, we had probably had like four weeks of rehearsals and we just dove into the material. We dove into just like our stories as, mm -hmm. you know, human beings and, how they related to the material. And, you know, we just like dove into a full on process of just like sharing, you mm -hmm. know, and, and hearing and listening. And yeah. so, you know, that was, that built a lot of trust. And so by the time that we're on set, you know, I'm able to like talk to Shane or Karima. And even if I suggest something that they may not like feel like, I don't know, like they, they didn't think of that or that wasn't something they were planning, they know that I'm there for them. Mm -hmm. And that one thing I told Shane during, while we were like rehearsing, I was like, you have to understand that, like, I need you to be able to trust fall with me and, like, know yeah. I will catch you every time, you know, so. Oh, I love that trust fall with you. That's yeah. so, that's a great analogy. Yeah. Um, what I, I mean, goodness me, you set quite a standard for yourself being your first <laughs> film. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, it was cinematic experience to watch, just the the moments that you, you left us in and just the kind of... Um, symbolism you have behind some of the, 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 the scenes, the montages that you put us in. Mm. Um, I mean, goodness me, I mean, I was like thinking of like Tree of Life, I was thinking of Black is King, I was thinking of all these incredible picturesque like experiences. And so wow. I'm just curious in making your first film, uh, what was like some of your influences and, and how did you want it to be, how did you want it to feel for your audience from a cinematic perspective? I mean, a lot of the, the influences that I had came from just my own time of learning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, during the pandemic when everything was shut down, uh, I downloaded the Criterion channel and dove yes. into just films I had never heard of wow. and films I fell in love with. Yeah. And, you know, there was just, it, I, was, I was looking at one film that was really inspiring and then I learned more about that director or that mm -hmm. writer and I just dove down films that they liked and I just oh, really I gave it. myself like, my own self-education of film. Yeah, and I that's got, great advice. That's yeah. how you do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's a little daunting at times. There's so much stuff out there, especially with like streaming nowadays. Mm -hmm. But being able to learn who you want to learn from mm -hmm, is very mm -hmm. cool and yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so I was able to, you know, just charge up during that time. And I think that that greatly influenced the material as well. Absolutely. But when we were putting the film together, um, like when I was meeting with our DP, Corey Gear, 
we shot lists like to the nines and mm -hmm. you know even from like you know production design to sound design we really made the film to be seen in a theater mm -hmm. and because that you know we we're like we want to take it to film festivals and you know I'm, I'm a cinephile i love going to the movies so making sure that that film was an absolute experience mm -hmm. uh, was very important to us so what does it feel like then because we certainly loved having your film at new filmmakers la what does it feel like to make this film see it on the big screen with an audience how is that feeling for you it's different every time honestly um i, th I you know there's there's the, the critic in me is like, <laughs> ah, you know, little points and whatnot. But overall, though, you know, I look back at the filmmaker that I was in, you know, summer of 2021 and being like, that guy did the best job that he could, you mm -hmm. know. And I'm very proud of what the film is and what it says. And I think that every single time that I make a project, I want to be able to have the inside uh, confirmation that this film is like, means so much to me. And, and, and there's so much like, weight and, and what I'm trying to say as mm -hmm. an artist at that point that, you know, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, like my grandkids could watch that someday and feel like they're knowing who I was at that point in my life. And that's like mm. kind of like a barometer or I don't know yeah. if that's the right word, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. you know, something that, that's, that's what I want to like reach with every film, you know? So I think that when I'm watching it last night, there's just, there's certain chapters that hit home more sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, like, yeah. You know, like last night, the father-son scene really hit home. Yeah. You know, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we'll clip this interview so you can show your grandkids in 20, 30 years, okay? <laughs> like, when I was young, see, I told you, I told you I was doing it for you. Yeah. Um, no, that's, that's lovely, Scott. Um, just to close on, uh, what is next for you? What is next on the horizon for you creatively? Uh, we have a couple of music videos and commercials coming up with our production company, thankfully. Things are starting to get back in motion, but uh, we have our first feature film that we're, you know, kind of spearheading into mm -hmm. uh, towards the end of the year, beginning of next. So, you know, very excited about that. And, you know, it's a long time coming, I feel like. So, uh, yeah, very excited about that. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Panorama. Really excited to see your next projects, but thank you for bringing on to new filmmakers. Thank and you so much. welcome to the family. Thank oh, you very so much. Thank, thank you, so Scott, much. everybody. <laughs>